What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a video review of the Lynx. This is a 3D printed blaster which shoots exclusively half-length darts. It's spring-powered, insanely powerful. It's a bullpup, so it's super small, and it has slam fire. External overview of the Lynx, starting up at the front, there's no instruct barrel lug. But right here, we have sling mounts on the right and the left-hand side. Above that is a Picatinny-style rail, which is 3D printed. This entire blaster is 3D printed, but this is, without a doubt, the best 3D print quality I've ever seen in my life. When I take my glasses off, I cannot tell this is 3D printed. And you you can hardly feel it. So this is more of a tactical rail you can put on an airsoft optic if you want to. It's not compatible with nerf attachments, but this blaster is accurate enough to justify legitimate red dot sight. Like super tight groupings. It's ridiculous. Down below is the priming handle to prime. You do that. It requires a tremendous amount of strength because it shoots over 220 FPS. That being said, it's a very smooth prime. It's not riding on like a 3D printed rail system. Like some of those old worker prime kits that just sounded disgusting when you primed it. This sounds fine. It feels smooth, but it does take a lot of force to prime. And this vertical grip is actually attached to another Tactical rail, so if you want to put on a different foregrip, you totally can. I think this one's comfortable and it matches the blaster, so I'm totally keeping this one. Moving back to the trigger, the trigger pull feels pretty standard, but this blaster does have slam fire. It's quite difficult to continuously fire off because, like I said, it takes a little bit of muscle to prime this blaster. Yeah, slam fire over 200 FPS. That almost sounds unfair. But because it has slam fire, you're not able to deprime the blaster like with the Caliburn. Moving down to the grip, it has a very comfortable, smooth ergonomic grip. It's not as thick and beefy as a rival blaster, but it seems like this is intended for an adult, not a child. Overall, pretty comfortable grip, but this 3D print is so smooth, there's no texture at all on the grip. So wrapping some athletic tape around the grip might be a good idea. I'm complaining that the 3D printing is too smooth. I've never thought I'd do that. <laughs> right behind the grip is a magazine release, which is a really interesting design. So if you can see, my firing hand's thumb can move back like this and bump it back to take the mag out. There's also another mag release right here, so instead of using your firing hand, you use your offhand, bump that, and pull the mag out like that. Two options for the mag release, so you can do it whichever way you want. But that takes us to the magazine well, which is right here. This is a small mag well because it's only compatible with the half-length darts. This blaster is not compatible with Nerf Elite darts or full-length magazines. But this mag well is flared like a funnel, so you don't even have to look to reload quickly. Every magwell in the world should be designed like this. It doesn't make any sense to not have a funnel on your magwell. I dig the magwell. I dig this whole blaster. I think it's engineered very well. For my testing procedure, I use the worker half-length mags and the adventure force half-length darts. These are my favorite half-length darts, and these are my favorite half-length magazine, and this blaster is compatible with both. But this blaster features a compression barrel, so it is picky on which darts you use, specifically referring to the dart tip. So if it has too beefy of a rubber tip, it'll drag on the barrel and the performance will be pretty bad. But with the adventure force half-length darts, the blaster performs very well. Moving on, behind the magwell, we have two sling mounts, one here and one here. And back to the stock, being a bullpup, it's obviously built into the blaster. It is not removable or adjustable. And it's a very small, actually narrow stock. And because the spring is so powerful, I actually left marks on my shoulder after shooting this a few hundred times. Because it's a very small amount of surface area, my only complaint about this blaster is I wish it had a bigger, thicker stock with more surface area to distribute that prime weight over my shoulder instead of one small area. That is an external overview of the Lynx. Let's see this beast shoot. Fire. That is so satisfying. <laughs> Sorry, door. Operating the Lynx is a lot of fun. This blaster shoots insanely hard. And with the right ammo, it shoots insanely accurately. I was getting a six inch group on that firing demo. I did not experience any significant jams and malfunctions with this blaster. However, about one out of 15 to maybe one out of 20 primes, it would fail to catch. And that was caused by short stroking the system just a tiny bit. So it's not mechanical failure, but it is susceptible to human error. To fix the issue, you just have to prime more deliberately and really squash this prime because it's a very strong spring. Other than that, the only inconvenience I had was accidentally bumping this mag release, which drops the mag. With more practice and training, I could eliminate the problem, but for me, I would actually just rip this little piece off. So that's really a non-issue, just a minor gripe. But other than that, the blaster performed very well. It did not experience any jams and malfunctions, and it shoots insanely hard. How hard? I put it up on my chrono to find out. Shooting Adventure Force half-length darts, I achieved an average velocity of 226 feet per second. Holy moly, that is significantly faster than the 70 FPS par out of most Nerf Elite blasters on the market right now. This is up in the Caliburn range. The Caliburn shot 215 feet per second with the 
the same ammo. So yeah, it shoots flipping hard. It freaking hurts to get hit with this thing. That is all of the objective information I can provide on this blaster. Now to my personal opinion. Overall, I am blown away by the Lynx. This thing is quite a performer. It shoots insanely hard, it shoots insanely accurately, and I really appreciate the design. It's an incredibly compressed blaster, given the barrel length, like it's insane. I've complained about bullpups in the past because the ergonomics are a little weird, and when you're not using a compression barrel, like with a Nerf Raven, which is flywheel powered, a bullpup like does nothing. But with a compression barrel, you can have this insanely long barrel in a very small blaster. Honestly, this blaster is a little too small for me. I wish the grip was a little bit more spread out and I wish the stock was just a little bigger. So that's a weird complaint. I'm complaining that it's too small and efficiently designed. What have I become? <laughs> But that complaint's not really realistic. I'm 6'4 in height, which is bigger than average. If you're under six feet, I think this blaster will fit you perfectly. So overall opinion is very positive. This blaster is amazing. This blaster's in a different league up with the Caliburn, which both shoot insanely hard. The Caliburn is significantly longer, but the Lynx actually has a longer barrel, which speaks to the benefits of a bullpup design. And the 3D print quality out of the Lynx is second to none. I've never seen a 3D printer print this well compared to the Caliburn, which has more ordinary 3D print quality. So overall opinion, very positive on the Lynx. Now to the question, to buy or not to buy. If you're a stock class nerfer or even an HVZer, this blaster shoots way too hard for your Nerf Wars. I would not feel comfortable shooting this blaster at anyone inside my house. Engaging at under 50 feet will probably leave a welt. It shoots so hard. This blaster is obviously intended for hardcore competitive outdoor Nerfers. When everybody on the field shooting over 200 FPS, shooting half-length darts or Steffens. For that audience, this blaster is fantastic. The ergonomics is solid. The performance is obviously incredible. And I really like the looks and the design of the blaster. It looks really cool. It feels really great in the hands. The ergonomics and the fit and finish are phenomenal. And mine has been printed in blue and white because I like bright, obnoxious colors that don't resemble firearm colors at all. And I think it looks phenomenal, but if you buy one, you can customize the colors on the website. This is one of those reviews where my personal opinion shouldn't really sway your opinion. You know what kind of nerfer you are. If you're an outdoor nerfer shooting half-length darts over 200 FPS, I think this is a great blaster. But that's honestly a different hobby than what I normally play, which is stock and super stock and rival wars. So my opinion shouldn't really be considered. I think you should analyze the information on your own and make that purchase decision on your own. But I am really satisfied with the links. I think it's a phenomenal blaster. Hopefully I've laid out all the information you need to make an educated purchase decision. If you'd like to buy one, I'll put a purchase link in the description box below. That concludes this video review. Thanks so much for watching, bros, and as always, stay tactical.